Hey everyone, Gabe here from Babylon Journey, and in this episode we are going to make a character controller with a third person camera. So we'll have a little character that you can move around, very simple ground, using keys on your keyboard. And you'll be able to see the character moving around because we'll be in a third person camera. Alright, before we get into that, I know a couple episodes ago I mentioned that because you're learning Babylon JS, you'll be learning how to make immersive experiences that can run from the Apple Vision Pro headset. Well, I opened up the Vision Pro uh, simulator on Xcode and pulled up my own product uh, frame. And happy to say that it did actually work really nicely in Safari, which has WebXR support. Here you can see I popped it up into immersive mode and full immersive experiences will work right from the browser uh, from the Vision Pro, which is really cool. So all these skills you're learning will let you make uh, websites that can power uh, fully immersive experiences on the Vision Pro. Okay, very cool. Obviously, people were excited about this. I think this might have been my most liked uh, LinkedIn post ever. <laughs> okay, cool. So just like with other episodes, I'm going to have two code sandboxes, one for the final project if you just want to copy and remix that, and one that is like the starter if you want to remix uh, or fork the starter and then follow along. In my starter, I've got a little bit of boilerplate. And before I dive in, I want to say that this was inspired directly from uh, a page on the Babylon documentation, which all of you absolutely should check out. I should just be one source among many sources of your learning journey. And there was a really good character controller kind of sample code in here. and. I definitely used this as my foundation, but I fixed a couple little quirks with it and I added a run behavior. So when you hold down shift, you move faster so that we could get into animation speed a little bit. But uh, yeah, I will link to this. Uh, by the way, we're not gonna be creating the character either. Uh, and this page actually gets into how to create the character and rig it with animations, which you can do pretty easily using a tool called uh, Mixamo or Mixamo. I never know how to say it. So yeah, uh, if you want to actually get into the rigging of the character yourself, that's another reason to check out this page here. Okay, but we're just going to be focusing on the code to really bring the character controller to life in this uh, episode here. Alright, so in the boilerplate I've done a number of imports. As usual, uh, classes from the Babylon library that we're going to be using. And we have also done uh, the basic setup of a camera, we have an arc rotate camera because we want a camera uh, that rotates around a around something. In this case, it's going to be the character. And with an arc rotate camera, you can set a target and it'll actually follow that target around the scene. That's exactly what we want for a character controller. I've also set up, um, of course, the, I'm running the render loop on the engine. I've got my resize uh, observer to resize the engine if the browser window changes size. And I've just made a, uh, I've done a create ground to make a really simple ground. This is a helper function from Babylon that just makes a very simple plane on the ground. And that's it. All right, so let's see what this looks like right now, by the way. It doesn't look like much, it looks like this. And it's just a simple ground. <laughs> we, we don't have the character yet. This is going to be what the character walks on. All right, so first let's actually... Uh, I found the zoom to be a little bit sensitive here when I'm zooming in and out with the mouse wheel. We can actually adjust this with um, a property on the camera, which I defined up here, const camera, arc rotate camera, called wheel precision. And we're going to make this... We want it to be more precise, not less precise. That'll actually slow it down. So let's make it 10. Save that and see how that feels. I think it's going to feel just a little bit like slower. It's going to zoom a little. Yep. So I got to kind of drag it more to uh, to zoom, which I like a little bit better. All right, cool. So let's load in our, um, our model. Uh, which is going to be an asset that uh, is actually hosted in, like, in the Babylon, um, on the Babylon CDN. So we'll just be able to load it right in with a URL, which is pretty sweet. So I'm going to make a function that loads the model. It's going to be called const load model. 
And it's going to be async because we're going to do import mesh async. And I did not set that up right. Uh, load model equals async, blah, 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 blah. Uh, you're right. I don't need this equals. There we go. Okay. And we're going to do, let's make a variable for our model. And we're going to say await uh, scene loader dot import mesh async. Okay. And uh, this is where we actually put in the URL for uh, the model. Uh, which, as I said, is hosted on this Babylon.js URL, which is pretty cool. It's in their meshes folder. And this third uh, argument here, you actually put in like the name of the file. First, you do like kind of the root, like path, and then you do the file name if you're doing it uh, this way. And of course, it wants our scene. All right, lovely. That's our model. And uh, this pulls in an array, uh, it returns an array of meshes. And our player, we can just define as the very, kind of the root mesh, just the very first mesh in that array, model.meshes at the, at the zero index, okay? And let's see what that looks like. Uh, to do that, of course, we've got to run our load model function, no problem. And let's see what happens. Wow, okay, here's our character. <laughs> Very cool. Now our character looks quite big compared to our ground, uh, just scaling proportional wise. Notice by the way that Babylon will play uh, a, a baked animation on the model automatically. I didn't write any code to play this idle animation, but that was the very first animation uh, baked onto the model that it accessed. So it just plays it by default. It assumes that it wants to play an animation. All right, but let's scale her down a little bit. And we can do that with uh, player.scaling. Now you can do player.scaling.x equals player.scaling.y equals, but a little shortcut is you can just do player.scaling.setAll uh, if they're all gonna be the same sort of thing. And I wanna take it a 10th of the size that it is, so 0 0.1, by default it's one. And let's see how that looks now, scale-wise. Okay, I think that looks pretty darn good. So I've got a big floor to walk around. Not too interesting, but the focus here is mostly on the character and uh, the walking. So let's get to that now. Now I mentioned that with the Arc Rotate camera, the beautiful thing about it is you can set a target and then when that target moves, the camera moves with it. This is like classic third person camera behavior, right? You use your keyboard or something to move the character around and the camera just follows along automatically. So that's great. Uh, we know that the camera is stored on this camera variable. So we can do camera and the arc rotate camera has a method for set target. We can just set target player. And now if the player moves, the camera will move to keep it in focus, which is pretty sweet. All right, now when you create a 3D model that's got animations on it, which this one clearly has, uh, and remember, I mentioned this page that gets into how to actually kind of rig up this model and add animations to it, which is not too hard. Um, you can access these animation groups in your code. So I know that the model has certain animations on it. And I'm going to say, okay, walk anim uh, equals scene.get animation group by name walking. So when you load the model, uh, into the scene, all the animations on it get added to uh, the scene um, in an animation group. And you can access them this way. So now I've got a reference to that walking animation right here in this variable. And I can do this for uh, all the animations. There's a walk back animation. And again, these were actually added to it from this uh, Mixamo uh, library of animations that you can just like add to your characters if they're rigged a certain way, which is pretty cool. And I know the name of them, which is how, which is what I'm plugging in here, right? These aren't just me making, making things up. Like this is actually the name of the animation that's baked onto the model. Okay. Uh, we're going to do idle uh, anim. This is the one that's playing uh, automatically, as you can see. Animation group by name and 
nuts idle. And we're going to get, uh, there's a dancing animation. Which is cool. So we're going to say Samba. And that one, same deal. Get animation group by name, Samba. OK, now that doesn't actually change anything on our front end, because all we've done is just we've made variables. We've made constants for uh, act, just storing references to these animation groups. We're going to use that but it doesn't change anything, just defining them like this. Now, I mentioned that we're going to use shift for changing the speed of the characters walking, right? If you're like holding down shift while you move forward, which I'm pretty used to from game controls. I think that's how it is for Halo <laughs> when I'm playing Halo uh, Infinite on my PC here. Hold down shift, you move faster. And we're going to need different variables for the uh, to store like the speed and stuff. So. I'm going to say, um, let's give you know, player walk speed uh, equals 0 0.03. We can tweak these later because we're going to see some of these are going to be too much or too small. That's OK. Uh, player run speed 0.1. Right, that's a lot bigger than 0 0.03. Let's say 0 0.1. Fair enough. We're going to do uh, player speed backwards. This is like the speed when the user is walking backwards. This is usually pretty slow. Let's say 0 0.01, even slower than walking. Makes sense to me. And we're going to do uh, player rotation speed. When How quickly can the player turn? And we're going to do run anim speed equals 1. And cons walk anim speed equals 1. Now you, be, you might be thinking, well, you already had a walk speed and a run speed. So why do you need a run anim speed and a walk speed? and in speed. When you move faster, two things have to happen. One thing is that the character actually covers that distance faster, like the character moves forward faster in space. The other thing that has to happen is that the animation that's playing on the character has to move faster. Otherwise, the user will be doing the same walking pace but moving faster, which wouldn't make sense. It would look kind of, that'd be like looking like a slow-mo sort of effect, okay? Uh, and I'll actually show you later what that looks like. But so my point is, if the character itself is gonna be moving faster, we need the animation to actually go faster to have that make sense and not look strange. Okay, and finally, these are gonna be variables that change um, based on which one of these we are using, Just speed and uh, and in speed. Okay, and these are lets because we're going to be changing these later. All right, lovely. Now, how are we going to set up our key controller based, like, how are we going to map the movement to the different keys? A bunch of different ways to do this, and I really like the way from this example, and we're going to use it. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to have an object called key status, and we're going to store whether different keys are pressed or not in this key status object. Here's how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna say, first of all, they're gonna all start false. Like W false, S false. These are the different keys that the user can push to move around. And in the beginning, we assume that the user is not holding down any of them. They all start off false. B is gonna be the bonus uh, key for triggering the Samba dance. And then shift, which we know is gonna be a key for uh, hold that the user can hold down to run. So, okay, fair enough. We basically have an object that just uh, kind of maps out the different keys the user can push, and they all start out as false. Okay. Now, the way that we're going to detect keyboard input so that we can map, you know, basically when the user pushes W, for example, then we want to turn this W to true. Uh, if the user presses S, we want to turn S to true. So we need to detect keyboard input. We're going to do that with what Babylon calls uh, an action manager. Okay. An action manager is basically what you can set up to listen to different events so that you can trigger different actions based on them. So these events could be uh, key presses, like key press down on something, or uh, keyboard, uh, listening to a keyboard event. And then when those things happen, you can trigger uh, actions. So it's really key like building block for like interactivity and things like that in your scene. Okay, now to register an action, you do scene.actionmanager.register action, which makes sense. 
Now, what is the action that we want to happen? Uh, well, we want to execute some code when something else happens, right? And we what the, the action for this, and I already imported this, is execute code action. It's pretty straightforward, right? It's like we want to execute code when something else happens, when a key is pressed. So we're going to do new execute code action. Now, the first argument this takes is uh, like, what are you listening for? What what has to happen to execute this code? And it is uh, an on key down trigger. And this is on the action manager class, right? Action manager dot on key down trigger. And there are tons of different options here, right? Like this could be uh, on double pick trigger on every frame on intersection enter if you're going to do like collision based things on left pick really everything under the sun is here but we're listening for keys okay so we're going for keys on key down trigger and then i believe the second argument it takes is actually like uh, a function right like the code that you're going to execute when um this trigger happens okay so we're going to do uh, here's our function and let's do a little arrow function okay lovely uh, you pass in the event so that you can tell what key it is then we're going to say let key equals event dot uh, you got to do source event dot key this like kind of lets you determine which key was actually, you know, key downed, which which key did the user push down? Okay, fair enough. Now, if the key is not shift, right? Because shift kind of makes things interesting. It took me a little while to figure out here. I, I, I had some bugs here where nothing was working and it turned out shift. If the user's holding down shift and then presses A, then the key it detects is a capital A. <laughs> not a lowercase a. Now looking back, it's like, well, duh. Uh, but this kind of threw me for a loop. Um, so what I want to do is if the key is not shift, then we're going to make it lowercase. That way, if the user is holding down shift and then they press W, we're still going to set W to true so that we can know that the user is trying to walk forward. Okay. Now to lowercase, this, is, this isn't this is a special Babylon thing. This is just a JavaScript uh, method on the string. like prototype. Okay. Now, uh, if, if the key is in our key status object, then we want to map it to that property. Okay. All right. Now I am missing on some kind of event. There we go. All right. So what this is saying is, look, if it's not shift, then make sure it's lowercase. And then if the key is one of these keys, right? If key is in key status, then key status, find that key and set it to true. Okay. This is a big deal. So now, like, if I were to hold down W, then W would become true in my key status object. And we can see this work if we go to, uh, I'll go to console.log. And I'll log out key status after the action. Okay, so now let's check this out. I'm gonna pull up the browser console so we can see the console. And Microsoft Edge is giving me a bunch of spam. I'm gonna press W and let's go to the console. And look, here's our key status object false, 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 but W is true. If I press A, we've got uh, false, A is true. B is false, D is false, S is false. W is still true, even though I pe pressed A. That's because we never set it back to false, right? Our code doesn't do any setting back. It's only setting things to true. So we need to fix that. We need to make sure that when the user is not pressing W anymore, that W in our key status goes back to false. So let's do that. And it's not too hard. Instead of an on key down trigger for execute code action, we need an on key up trigger. Fair enough. So we can put this on the same action manager where we register the first action. We're just going to register another action. Okay, so let's do it. Scene.actionManager.registerAction. 
scroll down a little bit. And this time, we still want to do a new, it's still an execute code action. We want to run some code when this trigger goes off. Okay. But this time, it's going to be action manager dot on key up trigger. Right? When a key is released, we want to execute our code. And the second argument here is the function we want to execute, the code we want to execute. Okay. So what do we want to do now? Well, we want to make sure this is up to date, right? Key status, false or true, based on whether the user is pressing it or not. So we, this is our chance to reset things to false once the user lifts their finger off a certain key. Okay, so for this, we need to do a similar like shift check. Um, so what I'm gonna do is let key equals, just like we did above, event source event dot key lets us access the root kind of JavaScript event, which is what we need to get that key code. And then we're gonna do uh, same thing. If key does not equal shift, then we're gonna lowercase it. Okay. Key equals key dot two lowercase. Lovely. Cut. Now, if the, just as above, if the key is in our key status object, then here we want to do key status, access that particular key, and now we set it to false. And just to check that this is working, let's log this out. Now we're going to log out the key status in our on key up trigger. Okay, here we are, got our character. Notice we haven't done, we haven't really set up movement yet. I'm, pu I'm pushing the movement keys. The character is not moving. We haven't done that. I'm just doing the key mappings so that we have the info we need to do what we need to move the character. So I'm going to press W once. And in our mapping, we've got W is, well, we've got everything false because the most recent one, I've let go of the key, which sets everything back to false. But if you look at the first one, see W is true. And then, but then in the second one, W is false, goes back. So now we've got this accurately mapped when the user pushes down or pushes up in our key status object. We did this with our action manager, uh, execute code on two different triggers, on key down and on key up, keeping this up to date with false or true based on which keys are held down at any time. Amazing. Now, what we need to do is actually move this character around. <laughs> Let's actually get to the, the meat of it, really. Uh, so what I'm going to do is we're going to make a variable um, called moving. It lets us know if the character is moving or not. It starts out false, right? Because at first the character is not moving. Now we want to set up, uh, we've done this before in a few lessons, the on before render observable. This is code that's going to fire uh, before every frame. Pretty much constantly, this code is going to be running, okay? And that's what we want, because no matter what, if the user pushes W, I want to be able to respond to that. So this code kind of has to execute all the time to be listening for those changes. Okay. So here's the code that's going to run uh, basically every like frame. So let's check if any of the keys are pushed. Let's check if any of these values are true in our key status kind of key mapping object. So let's do if uh, key status dot w or key status dot s or key status dot a or key status dot d or our special samba dance key status dot b. Basically, if any of these are true. Uh, then the user is going to be moving, right? So we can set moving to true here. But what else is going to happen? Well, let's actually move the character. So first, let's do, so yeah, moving's true. But if the key status, see, let's do move backwards first, right? S, W-A-S-D, S is like move backwards. If key status dot S, uh, and not key status.w. In other words, if the user is pressing S 
but they're not pushing W, then let's actually move the character backwards. Okay? So now we have a reference to the walk backwards animation as well. This is like some of the stuff we set up in the beginning. Remember, uh, walk back anim is uh, scene dot get animation group by name. This is the name of the animation baked onto the character, and we made a reference to it right here. Walk back anim. Well, now I'm uh, I'm using it. Walk back anim dot start. So this is the method uh, you call on an animation group to actually start the animation. Okay, so dot start. Now this takes a bunch of uh, a bunch of arguments. First one is, do we want this animation to loop? I'm gonna say, yeah, true. The next one is the speed ratio. Um, I'll get into this in just a second, but this is basically like how fast you want it to go relative to the speed that it has when it's baked. Like I just want it to be the speed that it sort of has. So we can just say one um, and that'll work out just fine. And then you do uh, walkbackanim.from walk back anim dot two okay uh, use the use the helpers here in the code sandbox to actually see the different arguments so you define where the animation is moving from and to and these are actually things that are defined on the animation itself so we can just access them from that walk back anim uh, variable okay lovely and then um, after these we want false for this argument for is additive. So we don't want it to be additive. Additive means that it's meant to be kind of layered on top of another animation in this kind of combined animation way, which we don't actually need for our purposes here. So this can be false. Now let's see what this looks like. Uh, I detected, by the way, that I needed to cap the names of these animations as they're baked on the GLB model itself were all capped. I need to capitalize these W's, which I did. And let's see what this looks like. Um, remember right now we are, we set up our key mapping so that in theory, when a key is pressed, this should be true in our key status. And then every tick we're saying, if one of those is true, then let's run some code. Specifically, if S is true, the key to move backwards, then let's grab our walk back animation, run start, on it. Okay, let's see how that does. Wow, there we go. I pressed S once and I let go. The character's moving. So a lot is good here. I pressed S and it happened, but then I'd expect this to stop when I let go. So we're gonna have to get to that and none of the other keys do anything. We've just set up S. And there is the animation that's baked onto the model triggering. Uh, with the start, we've ran start on that. Okay, lovely. Now, instead of that, let's do else if key status dot w or key status dot a or key status dot d. You know, not S. I'm, I'm, now I want to run some code if the user is pushing W, A, or D. Okay. And what do I want to run? Well, first, if the user is holding down Shift, then I want the speed to be a little different because um, I want Shift to be run, you know, move faster. So we're going to do speed. Dot, now I know what to access to see if the user is holding down shift, right? Because we did our key mapping really well. Basically, if the user is holding down shift, then this will be true because of our key mapping. Nice. So I, you know, key status dot shift will let me know if the user is holding it down or not. So I'm going to say, I'm going to do a little ternary expression. I'm going to say speed equals if the user is holding down shift, then it'll be the player run speed. And if not, it's going to be the player walk speed. And these are speeds that we defined already up above these constants, right? The run speed is a lot faster than the walk speed. Okay, lovely. And the anim speed, same deal. Um, key status dot shift, and we'll do run anim speed if shift is true, but walk anim speed if it's false. This little elegant ternary here. Okay. And remember, uh, the anim speed is different 
than the speed because you need to control both the rate at which the character moves and the rate at which the animation plays. So that doesn't look like you're slow-mo walking. You're moving faster, but it looks like you're walking at the same pace. Wouldn't look right. Okay. All right, now for walkanim.speed ratio, this is us actually adjusting the speed relative to the speed that's like baked into the animation by default. And we want it to be our anim speed, whichever it is, right? Whether it's this run anim speed or walk anim speed, we actually need to set that. Okay, now let's do uh, walk anim dot start. And just like before, uh, we're gonna pass in the anim speed, um, and we're going to do uh, walk anim dot from and walk anim dot to, and not additive, so we can say false. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So now I'm thinking, if I'm pushing W, A, or D. I should be starting the walk animation. And we're gonna get into turning in a bit with A or D and making sure that rotates the user, but that's in a little bit. First, we should now see things happening if I'm pushing basically any of the keys. So I just pushed W and, that, and now I'm walking forwards. I just pushed S, now I'm walking backwards. Let's see if our shift situation works. I'm gonna push W Oh, it's not, uh, <laughs> hang on, I'm gonna refresh. We're not handling the um, animation stop very well just yet. So I'm just gonna start with holding down shift and pushing W. You see, I'm actually moving faster uh, than I was when I just pushed W. We have some more work to do to handle a lot of things like stopping the animations a little bit better. So let's do that. Okay. What I'm gonna do is, um, if the key status is A, this is for left turn, right, A? If the key status is A, then I want to actually rotate the player. Player.rotate vector three dot up, and I'm gonna talk about this in a second, and minus the player rotation speed. So what this rotate method does is it, as you can read in the documentation, it rotates the mesh around the axis vector. Okay, now you might be thinking, well, don't we want forward? Aren't we taking the user forward? And I'll show you what that looks like when you do forward. This is with the A key now, so I'm gonna press A. Okay. So remember that the axis you define here, <laughs> this is the axis that it's rotating around. We don't want it to rotate around the forward uh, vector, right? The forward vector is like the direction out of the character. And when you rotate around that, that's what happens. We actually want to rotate around the vector that's upward relative to the player. That's why we want vector three dot up. And we want it to rotate to the left and not the right. So that's gonna be the difference between negative and positive here, okay? So let's try it now using vector3.up as the thing that it's rotating, the axis it's rotating around. Okay, I'm gonna press A, and you can see that's actually turning me to the left now. That's amazing, amazing, moving around. That's a little awkward because she's still moving even though I've got no hands. <laughs> it's okay, we're gonna to get to that. Okay, that's A. But now I want uh, if key status is D to move right, right? Now you might guess what's gonna happen here. Player.rotate. We wanna rotate around that same upward vector, but now we want the player rotation speed positive because we want it to go the other way. Now I think A and D should both work just fine. I'm pushing D, moving to the right, pushing A, moving to the left, and W is moving me forward, S is moving me back, but still no hands. Uh, it's not releasing, um, it's not stopping when I'm not pushing anything, which is annoying. So let's fix that. Okay, 
So, and let's get our dance animation going, which is fun. So we're gonna do if key status dot b for dance, and what we wanna do is samba anim, which we referenced up above, start. Okay, uh, we want it to loop, and speed one, uh, samba anim dot from, samba anim dot two, these are values we already have from the animation group itself, so we can just access it that way, just like the other ones. It's not additive, so we're gonna say false. So let's see what that looks like. Do a refresh. Now when I press B, I should see the Samba. When I press W, move forward, A, move back, and let's start with B, there's the Samba, lovely. Now W, move forward, but notice when I zoom out, I see that the animation is actually plain but my character is not actually moving in the space, right? These are those two different variables that I mentioned before. One of them actually controls the animation speed and the other one is the actual speed at which the user is moving through the space. And right now the user is not moving at all. It looks like they are, but you zoom out enough, they're just moving in place. The animation is playing, the character is not moving. We need to fix it. Let's do it. So uh, basically at the end of any of these, you know, whether it's W, A, or D, uh, or S, uh, we basically need to make sure that the character actually moves, not just the animation plane, but the character moving. So let's do um, player dot, now the method I'm gonna use for this is move with collisions, which is a function that will move something around and also respect collisions that you've got set up in the collision engine, which we're not gonna have set up yet. That's gonna be a follow on uh, episode, but we can use this in the meantime to actually move our character around. We can say player dot forward dot scale in place. This is us scaling the vector uh, forward uh, based on the speed. It's like we're scaling the vector up or down based on the, uh, the user's speed. Okay. So now that alone should actually mean that we're not just playing the animation, but we're actually moving the character as we should. Let's see, there we go. But notice when I let go of W, I'm still, the animation's still playing. Okay, I don't like that. But when I press W again, I'm actually Look, my character is actually moving relative to the ground, and that's really good. I'm able to move, well, walk back, get stuck in a lock. We're gonna fix that in a second. Okay, but this is progress though. All right, now basically, we need to clear things out properly. Um, you know, if uh, our very first conditional was like, if any of these are being pressed, then do some stuff. And then we have little sub conditionals for which one is pressed. But we need a conditional for like, if nothing, if none of those are happening, right? Uh, and that moving, if none of those are being pushed and moving is true, remember we set moving to true if any of those are pushed. It's basically saying like, okay, if none of those are pushed and the user has been moving, then we need to do some stuff. Specifically, let's bring that idle animation back. Uh, the one that was playing at the very beginning, true, regular uh, speed ratio, idle anim dot from, idle anim dot to, not additive, okay? And we wanna make sure that all the, uh, any other animations that might be playing, let's just stop them manually, samba anim, walk anim, we can stop them just like we started them, and walk back anim dot stop, and we can set moving, to false. And this should actually reset things properly. So let's see if we did that right. Okay, here we are. Move forward. Look at that. Press W. And when I let go, the user stopped. Pressing S. When I let go, the animations have stopped. Pressing D to turn. It's actually turning me. And I can stop moving all the way around. And notice when I press S, I move faster. But my animation is not moving faster. And I thought I had done that. So let's check our code, right? This is that strangeness I talked about where the, the user the user is actually moving faster, but the animation is the same pace. It doesn't quite make sense unless the person's really power walking. So let's check our code. This 
is around something with anim speed. Oh, well, I accidentally set them to be the exact same, one and one. So the run anim speed, let's make three. Here we go. Pressing W, holding down shift, and there we go. Now that's a real power, <laughs> pretty intense, but you get the idea. You want the animation to suit the rate at which the player is moving. This one looks a little fast, but that's okay. But here we have our controller, right? We've got a camera that's moving with the, uh, the player. We're controlling the player with keys. And all the keys are working. We've got a bonus animation with B. And we're playing animations that are baked onto the model. And this is a pretty good basic third person camera controller setup. Just in about 200 or so lines of code. Not bad. Okay, no, this was a longer video. I'm really trying to make these shorter. It's just some of these more involved topics it's worth getting into. Uh, so I look forward to the next one and good luck.